and welcome to Westside Community Church Online. My name is Danielle, and I'm the children's ministry coordinator here at the church. Well, it's that time of year again. The hockey equipment has officially taken over my house, both in space and in smell. But it's a sign of fall. Maybe for some of you, it's late nights working in the fields on the farm that reminds you it's harvest time. Well, that's the title of today's sermon from Pastor Bert. It's harvest time. We hope that you'll enjoy his sermon as well as the worship and music as we spend this next 40 to 50 minutes together. We'd like to invite you to fill out your Connect card, which is linked in the description of this live stream, and let us know ways that you're seeing signs of fall or harvest in your life. Maybe let us know if there is any way that we can be praying for you or connecting with you during this season. Well, here at Westside Community Church, we are a spiritual hub for a great community, and we love connecting with our community. Some of the ways we do that are through our online platforms, like we're doing right now with you. We invite you to interact with this live stream using those like, love, and wow buttons. We also invite you to fill out that connect card or visit our website for more information on upcoming events here at the church. We don't want you to miss out on some of the exciting things coming up like Trunk or Treat or Fearless, our women's retreat. These are going to be awesome. And there's more details again on our website at www.mywestside.ca. Also on the website, you can find information on small groups, in-person church gatherings, and all sorts of other things. So please go there and check it out. We are meeting in person again at the church every Sunday at 1030. And if you would like to join us here at the church for one of those, we invite you to visit our website and register today. Well, we hope you all have a great week and we'd like to wish you a happy Thanksgiving. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my truth till I met you. I was breathing but not alive. Oh my. 
light of the world, shining in love, taking the fall upon your shoulders. You shattered the dark, you rose to life again. Search all the earth, those who are lost, leaving the rescue for the fall. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Welcome to Westside Online. If you're new to Westside, I'm Pastor Bert, and I'm so glad that you've joined us today. You know, Thanksgiving was originally started to give thanks to God for the harvest he provided to the early settlers that would help them survive through the cold winter ahead. And like those settlers, I'm definitely not looking forward to winter's approach. But I have to say that I think the harvest time of autumn is the most beautiful time of the year. The trees turning color and the golden fields of grain flowing like an ocean in the middle of the prairies. I just read this week that expectations are high for the harvest in Alberta. So far here in the southern part of our province, the yields are already 42% above the five-year average. So I guess you could say that the harvest is plentiful. Now imagine that you're a farmer this year, and as you've been watching and waiting for your fields to grow, and you're, you're seeing that the weather's cooperating, and, and the grain is maturing, and it's almost time, how would you be feeling? Anxious? Excited? Full of anticipation? But what if the moment finally comes 
it's harvest time, so you climb onto your combine and it won't start. The engine has seized up. It can't be repaired in time and no replacement are available. And those who could help you, well, they're busy working in their own fields. And you know that you only have a short window to get your crop off the fields before the snow comes. So in desperation, whether you have any faith or not, you pray for a miracle. Something, anything that could help you bring in the harvest. Well, there's an account in the life of Jesus where he talks to his followers about another harvest time. It was recorded by someone who was there named Matthew. Actually, Matthew's record of Jesus' life and ministry is the very first book in the New Testament portion of the Bible, which is all about Jesus' life and the early church. See, Matthew's account really shows us Jesus' heart for people. And I believe that it shows us where our priorities should really be in our own lives. Because as we'll see, people matter to God. And because they matter to him, they should matter to us. Because life isn't about just surviving or accumulating more and more and more. It's about making a difference in people's lives. And the biggest difference we could ever make is to help them discover the God who loves them and wants a relationship with them. If you want your life to have purpose and come to the end of it with a sense of satisfaction and accomplishment, then let Jesus' words move you to begin working in his harvest field. And as you give your life to him and his mission, it'll change your life and heart, making you more loving and compassionate, just like Jesus. The text I wanted, that I mentioned earlier is found in Matthew uh, chapter 9, verses 35 to 40. It says, Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of the area, teaching in the synagogues and announcing the good news about the kingdom, and he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, the harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord of the, uh, who's in charge of the harvest. Ask him to send more workers into his fields. So as we can see from this passage, the harvest that Jesus was concerned about was people. People that he knew were going through life with no purpose, no future, and no relationship with the God who created them and loves them. In fact, the reason Jesus came to earth was to restore this relationship by dying for all people, to pay the price for our sin, so we could have a future with him, a future that would last forever. One of God's ancient preachers named Isaiah wrote, it's your sins that have cut you off from God. And the early church leader named Paul adds to this in a letter he wrote to the church that was in Rome at that time. He says, the payment for sin is death, but the gift that God freely gives is everlasting life found in Christ Jesus, our Lord. You know, the thing most people think about when they hear the word sin is the really bad stuff, right? Like murder and stealing and such. But the real definition is really quite simple. It's anything that we do that isn't God's best for us. Literally, it means to miss the mark or the bullseye. That's another thing Paul told the Roman church. He said, everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. So Paul shows us that because every single one of us falls short, which is another way of saying that we've missed the mark, that this is what pe causes people to die. Sin is what causes people to die. Death will... Death was never a part of God's plan for us. But it's what happened when we rejected God's plan and decided to live for ourselves. But because of his love 
and compassion for us. Jesus came to die in our place so we could be raised from the dead just like he was. That's what the most famous verse in the Bible is all about. It was recorded by Jesus' closest friend and follower named John. He said, recording Jesus' words, Jesus said, God loved the people of this world so much that he gave his only son so that everyone who has faith in him will have eternal life and never really die. So Jesus' love and compassion for people moved him to come rescue us. And it's why he's called his church to continue his rescue mission of saving a great harvest of people from death and destruction. If we're to succeed in fulfilling this mission, then we need to see people how Jesus saw them that day and still today. So how did Jesus see the harvest? Well, I'm glad you asked. First, he saw that people are plentiful. Now, this might seem like a no-brainer, right? But in Jesus' day, the population of the entire world was approximately 150 million people. 150 million. Today's world's population grows that much in less than two years. Yet at that time, Jesus said that the harvest was great. The world is big. The crowds are huge. The number of spiritually lost and dying people seems overwhelming. Lethbridge alone has over 100,000 people now. Folks, it's true that the harvest is even bigger today. But the good news is that Jesus' church is bigger as well. Bigger than any other organization or movement in the entire world. And while the harvest is great, It is not overwhelming. Not if every follower of Jesus does their job of helping someone discover God's love for them and restore their relationship with him through Jesus Christ. The next thing we find in Jesus' words is that people are precious. Not only was the harvest of people vast as Jesus looked upon it, but those people brought tears to his eyes. All those people then and now, matter to him. Make no mistake about it. Jesus loves people. We read that Jesus was moved with compassion in our text. And the word uh, Matthew used to describe Jesus' compassion was in fact the, the strongest word for pity in the Greek language. It describes the love that moves a person to the depths of their being. It's the type of love that moves people beyond sentimental feelings to actual heartfelt action. Jesus' compassion moved him to action. It brought him to earth and it compelled him to die for each and every one of us. People are so valuable to God. And so they should be valuable to his followers as well. The third thing Jesus showed us, or shows us, is that people, they're perplexed. People are perplexed. Jesus describes a crowd as being confused and helpless. Listen to the descriptions some of the other English Bible translations use here. They say harassed, distressed, troubled, bewildered, helpless, worn out, cast away. So the people really were defeated by life and had lost hope. And the toils and struggles of life had punched them in the gut one too many times. And the same is still true today, isn't it? People are desperate for meaning and purpose in life, distraught by the world's broken promises and looking for hope. And as Jesus' followers, we know That hope is found in Jesus. Listen to how Peter, Jesus' most well-known follower, put it in his first letter to the early church. He said, Let us thank the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It was through his loving kindness that we were born again into a new life and have a hope that never dies. This hope is ours 
because Jesus was raised from the dead. Folks, as followers of Jesus, we've experienced the hope that people are looking for. The hope for a life of purpose and meaning and a life that lasts forever. Are you willing to share that hope with someone? I hope so. <laughs> because the next thing that Jesus said is that people are perishing. Now, while I may have worked on a farm when I was younger, I'm far from an expert at farming. But as I think every, pretty much every Albertan knows, ripened wheat takes on a golden hue when it's ready for harvest. There's nothing more beautiful than driving around our province in the fall looking at the crops. However, if reaping is delayed, the head of grain starts to bow over and begins to turn a pale white and eventually falls to the ground. There's a statement Jesus makes, as recorded by John, uh, that ties in with the harvest metaphor we've, we've been looking at in Matthew. He says, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. So for Jesus to speak of the fields being white unto harvest, I believe is to stress the imperative of harvesting the crop before it perishes. And for me, this brings a sense of urgency to the harvest. Of the nearly 8 billion people in the world, it's estimated that over 44 million people worldwide will die this year. That's more than the entire population of Canada. And a recent study found that 60% of Canadians had not been to church even once in the past year. Not for Easter or even Christmas. Not for a wedding or funeral. 60, over 60%. This tells me that every day brings us closer to losing the harvest. That means that the church needs to take action. As followers of Jesus Christ, we have much work to do and little time to do it. it reminds me of Smokey the Bandit. I got a long way to go and a short time to get there. <laughs> Folks, we can't forget that good news is only good if, if it arrives in time. And that's why I believe Jesus said that people are priority. That's our last point. People are priority. Can you feel what Jesus feels? He's overwhelmed by his love for people as he sees the vastness of the crowds, the perplexity of their problems, and the sense of urgency in reaching them in time. Listen to Jesus' heart as we read the same text from the Passion Translation. It says, As you go, plead with the owner of the harvest to thrust out many more reapers to harvest his grain. Jesus is urging his followers to go and get out into the field and to plead for help in reaching more people with the good news of God's love for them so that they can be saved from the death and destruction their sin has earned them. The sobering reality of Jesus' words to his followers is that the harvest will never be gathered unless we are willing to do the work. Jesus chose his church to bring in the harvest. And if his followers are ever going to accomplish this great mission, we need to prioritize people like Jesus did, by seeing them as plentiful, precious, perplexed, and perishing. But maybe you're watching today, and you never knew about all this, of how much God loves you, or how he made a way for you to have a relationship with him, and live with him forever. But now that you've heard it, you want to experience this hope for yourself and be saved from having to die forever because of your sin. The truth is you can. Do you remember what we saw earlier in John 3.16? That everyone who has faith in Jesus will have eternal life and never really die? 
To have faith in Jesus means to trust him with your life. So when you give him your life, even though it's broken and hopeless, he gives you his life, a purposeful, meaningful, and eternal life. So if you're watching right now, and you'd like to take this step, then I'm going to help you by leading you in a short, simple prayer to God. Just pray along with me if this is your heart right now. Dear Father God, thank you that you love me so much that you made a plan so I could have a relationship with you. I accept your invitation and gift of eternal life with you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for showing me God's love by coming and dying for me. I don't understand it all yet, but I believe that you died and you rose again, showing that as God, you have power over life and death. And that same power is able to save me and help me to live for you forever. I choose today to become one of your harvesters. Please lead me and help me to live my best life ever by living your way and loving others the way that you love them. Help me to make people a priority so that they can experience your love through my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, before the band comes back to close our time together, if you gave your life to Jesus today, would you please let us know? You can fill in the Connect card that's linked to this video. We have some literature that we'd like to give you to help you as you start this new life with Jesus. And if there's anything else that you need help with, write that down too and we'll help where we can. All right? Thanks so much for joining us today, folks. And have a very Thanksgiving. Bye-bye.
forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. Tell the world of the treasure you found. Our hearts pour.
Well, thanks again for joining us. If today's service impacted you in some way, perhaps it left you with questions, or maybe you have a prayer request that we could be praying for you, we invite you again to fill out that Connect card, which is linked in the description of this live stream. We are thrilled that you were able to join us this weekend, and we hope you'll join us again next weekend, whether online or in person. Remember, if you plan to join us in person, we would invite you to visit the website www.mywestside.ca to register for the coming Sundays. We are thrilled to have seen you. We hope you all have a great week. And don't forget to check out the, the information on Trunk or Treat coming up October 31st. Have a great week, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>